Okay, the fourth example are uh, the fourth example is the planetary gear train. The pal planetary gear train is or the epicyclic gear trains. They're used uh, mainly, for example, uh, in in hybrid cars, using uh, that use both uh, gas engine and electrical motors. And this we have seen it in, in the first chapter because we have calculated mobility for this one and we have obtained that mobility is two. It means that for this kind of uh, gear train uh, we have two inputs. So if we have two inputs we cannot calculate uh, the speed ratio as usual it is only omega output divided by omega input. here is to find the speed it's not the speed ratio it says the speed of the output or the output angular velocity which will be in terms of the two inputs now here the two inputs we will have one usual input and one r now what are planetary or epicyclic gear trains in planetary or epicyclic gear trains we will have at least one planet. What means a planet? The planet is a gear which is supported or held by an arm is moving. What means that? It means that for planets, planets are gears here. For planets, they don't have fixed axis rotation. They have actually a general motion their kinematics is a general motion. They will rotate about an axis, but this axis is supported by an arm and the arm is itself moving. So the planet is, is a, a usual gear train, a spur gear train, but it is its motion is different. Its axis of rotation is not fixed. And if its axis of rotation is not fixed, if I can go back to this equation, when I have established this equation, I have established them assuming that A and B fix it. So it means that this equation cannot use them. I can forget about them. I can forget about this kind of calculating speed ratio. I have to find a new way. Why? This speed ratio have been established assuming that for all gears the kinematics is fixed axis rotation. In planetary gear train, in planetary gear train, we have some gears, not all of them, that have general motion. So I cannot use uh, I cannot use the uh, usual speed ratios. Now, a typical it's not only the the, the one a typical uh, pla planetary gear train is is shown here. What we will have here we have in the middle what you see in the middle here it is a gear first. The, 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 the teeth one, it is the central gear. This gear is called the sun gear. The sun gear has fixed axis rotation. Okay, now this gear, I don't care about the, the okay, uh, that is, I can put here so many uh, uh, planets, but uh, okay, it's only this contact that I'm interested in. I will be interested only in one arm. If I will study one arm, it will be the same for the two others as soon as the length of arms is the same and the radius or number of teeth of uh, planets here is the same. And this is what will be the case. So let's forget about the two. I will only focus on one. So in the central here, I have a sun gear. The sun gear is rotating about a fixed axis here. The arm is 
rotating about the same axis, but they don't have the same shaft, they don't have the same velocity. So like here, if you see in this uh, animation, the sun is in green. It is rotating about a fixed axis. The arm, so actually what is in red here are the three arms together. The arm is also rotating about a fixed axis. Okay. So I have a central gear, which is the sun, and I have an arm. Both will rotate about a fixed axis. The same axis, but not the same shaft and they will have, they will not have the same velocity. They can have different velocities, different speeds, different angular velocities. Now, at the end of the arm, I will hold the axis of rotation of this gear, which is called the planet. So here there is three planets, but they will work as if there is one because they are all similar. So I have here a planet. The planet is, is a spur here, it's like geometrically or mechanically it is the same as the sun except that it is held by the arm. So it is here in blue in the animation, it is the blue one. So here you see if you focus on the, the animation, the, the sun, the, the planet is rotating about the end of the arm the axis of rotation of this, the planet is held by the end of the arm, which is also moving. So you see here that the blue uh, planet here has a general motion. The planet is also measured to an external ring, which is here in black. Okay, it's not rotating here, but it can. It is rotating. It's just, uh, okay, fix it here, but it can rotate. Now, this ring also rotates about the same axis of rotation of the arm and the sun, but not with the same speed. So what we will have is the arm, the sun, and the ring, the outer ring, will all rotate about the same axis, but each one has a different shaft. So like here. What is in, in purple here, it is the R. What is in blue, it is the sun. And what is in orange here, it is the ring. And all three, okay, here is just to, to, sh to, to differentiate them, but okay, they should be have the same direction. Okay, this one should be exactly on the blue one. But I, I, I shifted it a little bit to, to make it clear. So, all the three will rotate about the same direction, but using three different shafts. So the, all three will have fixed axis rotation, but they will have different speeds. I will have omega for the sun, I will have omega for the arm, and I will have omega for the ring. And here I will consider only one planet, but it is the same if I will study the two others. They will work in, in parallel. So I will have here the same, the planet. Its axis of rotation is held by the arm. So it is a general motion. So it is also shown here. I will have the central sun in the middle, the uh, ring in orange, uh, the planet in green, and the arm in purple. And this one is just the reference or the ground. Okay, so this is it. This is a typical, it's not the only example, but a typical uh, gear train, a, a typical planetary or epicyclic gear train. So mostly we can represent this one by uh, only the pitch radius for each one. So again here, I have represented the three planets, but I can represent only one. They work in parallel, so I can study only one.
So I can represent them uh, this way or simply this way. Okay. Now, how I'm going to calculate the output, the output speed, the output angular velocity. I should work here differently. I should work here differently. I have two choices. I have two ways to do it. Either go back to kinematics and reestablish using equations, using contacts like I have done this one, go back to the like this one, but I will re-establish using kinematics that the velocity of two contact points is the same. Why? Because no slipping. But uh, when establishing the equation, I should consider that four planets, they have general motion. So I should use a relative velocity equations. Okay. So here I can, uh, okay, I need to find here. I have two inputs, mostly it is the sun and the R. So the sun here, it's given because I have, okay, mobility two, uh, two inputs. The arm, the omega velocity of the arm is, is given. So here the input I can consider, for example, it is the sun. And I should find what is omega of the planet and omega of the ring. So I need to find two equations. So two equations here, if I will write, I will show you just, but I will not do it because of short of time. If I will write, okay, I have two contacts that this contact point, there is no slipping here. Okay. And also that there is Okay, this one or, and this contact between the sun, it's not on the arm, this point. It is the second point, it is the contact between the sun and the planet. Also, they are measured together, so there is no slipping. If I will consider here, in this point and this point, that uh, there is no slipping and the velocities from the two sides are equal, I will have two equations. I can solve them and can find uh, omega uh, of the uh, uh, of the planet and omega of the ring. Now here, I will show a, a different method or a different uh, solution. And this procedure can work with only uh, with any. It is simple, and it can work with any planetary gear ring. The theoretical solution you need to study case by case to see how many unknowns, how many equations you can write, and to study all contact points. And can be sometimes long for some specific uh, planetary trains. Now, the solution that I'm going to show you here is, is more general, and it can work with all planetary or epicyclic gear trains. Now, how I'm going to do it? I will go and use superposition principle. Superposition principle. Now, superposition principle can be used in linear problem, and here our problem is linear. Now, superposition problem, how it will work. Now, here, I have two inputs, the sun and the R. And I want to or would like to, to see what is the effect of the sun and the effect of the R together. The final and combined effect. The super, superposition problem, and because the problem is linear, I can split this effect uh, in two steps. First, I will see what is the effect of the R, uh, and second, I will see what is the effect of the sun. So first, I will uh, see the effect, for example, of the sun. And to see the effect of the sun, I will block the R. Later, I will see the effect 
of the arm itself. So I will use the inputs one by one. I will not combine them. And later, the result for each case, I will add them together. I will have the total effect. So the effect of the sun and the arm together will be the same as the effect of the sun itself plus the sun, the effect of the arm itself. So the procedure, how it will work, okay, I will see that omega of the output will be exactly, okay, the omega of the output, okay, I'm looking for the same one, but, uh, okay, uh, I'm looking for the effect of the, the sun, so it will be the arm, I will assume the arm is fixed, is blocked, this is the first one, and then I will do the opposite, I will block the sun and see the effect of the arm. So, second, the sun will be fixed. So, first, I will make the arm not moving. Omega of the arm is zero. So, if the omega of the arm is zero, I will cancel this part. I will have the second part, the first part here. So, omega arm fixed. Omega, assuming the arm fixed, it will give me this first part. Then, I will assume that the sun is fixed. If the sun is fixed, omega sun is zero here. So, I will cancel this part and I will have the second part. Later on, I will add them together. And this is how the superposition principle will work. So, first, let's assume, okay, make the first assumption that, okay, let's find the first one. I will make a first step, step one, okay, I will assume that the arm is fixed, okay, it is only one step. Now, if the arm is fixed, it's a very nice case, why? If the arm is fixed, it means that the axis of rotation of the planet is fixed. It means that the planet, in this case, has a fixed axis of rotation. And this is so nice. Why? Because I will go back to the usual compound gear trains. In the compound gear trains, all planets or, or gears have fixed axis of rotation. So, in the step one here, I can use what I have established before. So I can consider only in this step one, it's not the total case, just we are working in steps. That first, I will assume step one, okay, let's make it, okay, I will make it step one uh, in a specific color. Okay, uh, I don't have so many. Okay, let's have this case, the arm is fixed. So the arm is fixed, I'm calculating omega this one. So I will calculate this part. I will calculate this part. If the arm is fixed, I will see only the effect of the sun. Now here, as the arm is fixed, all gears will have fixed axis rotation. So I can use what I have. Uh, worked before. I can use exactly what I have worked before, that the speed ratio, okay, they will not be the same as here, but I can use the same equations, okay. The speed ratio 
okay i will use all this color it will be here omega 4 of the ring divided by omega 1 of the sun so i can use exactly the same i will see So here the fraction, here, and I need three of them. So I would like to calculate omega 4 divided by omega 1. Now, as usual, as I have explained it before, I can only calculate the speed ratio or a fraction if two gears are measured together or if they are on the same shaft. So here, the ring 4 is only connected to the planet 3. So I can calculate omega 4 over omega 3. So I will introduce omega 3. But if I will divide by omega 3 and I would like to keep the same uh, fraction, I will multiply also by omega 3. Now 3 is connected directly to omega 1. So I don't need more than that. I will bring it omega 1 here why because 3 and 1 the 3 and 1 they are connected together they are measured together so i can calculate the ratio so here i can calculate omega 3 over omega 1 okay so i will do it omega 4 over omega 3 omega 4 over omega 3. Here I have a ring and the gear. So the contact here is internal. So here it will be N3 plus over N4. It is positive. Why? Because it is an internal contact. So here I will have N3 over N4. And Okay, it's plus. I don't need to write it. I will emphasize on it and I will write it plus. Why? Because I have an internal contact. It is exactly the case here. I have a gear which is internally measured with a ring. So I am in this case and the speed ratio is positive. Both will rotate in the same direction. Okay, now three and one are two spur gears they are measured externally so i will have a negative speed ratio so be careful to the sign to the direction so here i will have n1 over n3 but it is a negative a negative ratio now here i have from the two sides i have n3 and n3 okay i should it's negative i have n3 on the top and uh, n3 down and can simplify and i will at the end i will have only i will have only minus i will have only minus i have only minus uh, n1 over n4 and this is the speed ratio here it is the speed ratio n1 over minus n1 over n4. But this is what it is. Actually, it is omega 1, it is it's the one of the sun. Okay, it is the one of the sun. And omega 4, it is the one of the ring, the output. Okay, let's the output. But to calculate this one, actually, it is not the absolute value or the total value of uh, of the ring. It's only in the case of of omega of the arm. It is fixed. So this is what it is omega of the output, but only in the case of the arm is fixed okay because this is what i have assumed if it is not that case i cannot calculate it 
I have used the speed ratio y because I assume that the arm is fixed, so the axis of rotation is fixed, and the planet has fixed axis of rotation. And so I have, I was able to do it. So here I can, what I can say is that, okay, omega of the ring or the output, if the arm is fixed, it is minus n1 over n4 times omega of the sun. Okay. So I can remove all of this. So what should be here? In front of omega of the sun, it should be minus n1 over n4. Minus n1 over n4. Okay. This is, we have only calculated the first part. Okay, this is the first step. Now I need to move to the second step. To the second step, I will assume that the sun is fixed. Now the sun is fixed, the arm is moving, it's not simple. It's not simple, why? Because what I have learned until now, what I have used until now is only the case when the sun is when the arm is fixed. What I have established the equation here or here, it's only when the when uh, gears have fixed axis rotation. So even though here I, I will assume that the sun is fixed, I will try to go back. I will try to go back to the first case, which is the arm is fixed. And this one also, I need to do it in in steps so i will make here a table and the table will have okay three four uh, okay yeah i think i will use only this one okay so what i would like here it is to get that the sun is fixed. But I will make it in two steps. So I will make, it's actually, it is the step two, but it is the step two, one. I make the step two in, in, in the sub-steps, the sub-step to one and the sub-step uh, two, two. I will add the two steps. It's actually, I'm also here making superposition. I will make step two here. So what I need in, in, at the end in step two that the sun is, is fixed. Okay. And I will see here what will be uh, the velocity of the sun, the effect of the sun, the effect of the arm, and here I'm the uh, the ring. Okay, maybe I can reduce uh, these a little bit. Okay, the ring, the arm, and the sun. Okay, so what I want that the sun is fixed. So at the end, I would like that the sun has a zero angular velocity, okay? Okay, it's not good, maybe, I, okay, zero. This is what I want, that the sun is fixed. But I can work only, this is what I have learned until now, when the gear is, the speed ratio I have established is only when the arm is fixed. So I will try to make that, okay, the arm, this is, I will try to use it, that the arm is fixed. You will say me how, 
we'll try to make it in two steps. So if the arm is fixed in the second sub-step, it will be zero. Okay. Now, if the sun is fixed, okay, I would like the sun is fixed. So what I want, uh, I want to see the effect of the arm. And this is what I have already established. So to get this case, okay, what I will do is that what I want here is to see to see the effect of the arm. So it will be omega of the arm here or omega 3, uh, omega 2, the arm. So I will see of the arm. So at the end of omega, let me see, omega of the arm. I want to have the omega of the arm. Step two, this is the sun is fixed, and I want to see here the effect of the R. But I will assume in the second sub-step that the arm is fixed. To have at the end, okay, this step, this step, okay, this step should be, it is the superposition of the two first steps. So the step two, is the sum or the addition of step two one and step two two. So if I want in step two omega r and in step two two it is zero, so of course in step two one will be omega r. Why? If I will add omega r plus zero, it will be at the end omega r. Okay, now what I know also is that if I will give to the inputs the same velocity, so if if I will consider that the angular velocity of the sun will be the same as the arm, now here the gear train is blocked the gear is blocked and it will move as if it is only one rigid body. So in this case also, what I will have that the omega of the ring will be also the omega of the sun and also the omega of the arm. So in the first step to one, set first sub step to one, I will assume that all the arm and the sun has the same angular velocity. They will have the same angular velocity. So in this case, the ring will have also, and the planet, even the planet three, all will have. Why? If I will give the inputs the same angular velocity, the same speed, they will have the same. Okay, I will block the gear train. Okay, all the gear train will be as if it is one rigid body. Now, I should keep in mind that, okay, and I would like that for the sun, it will be zero. The sun, I would like to have it fixed. And to have the last step, this one, I will add the two. So to have the sun fixed at the end, in the second sub-step, I will assume that it has minus omega r negative y because if i will add these two together i will have omega r minus plus minus omega r i will have at the end zero so here i will have what i need okay this step i will make it in a different color okay so this is the step The step, the sun is fixed. The sun is fixed, the angular velocity is zero. 
and only I will work with the R. Okay, I will work only with the R. Now, if I consider the second step here, the second step here, I have the arm is fixed. Now, if the arm is fixed, it is exactly what I have established here. So it is exactly the step before. It is step one. It's exactly the step one. Okay, it is the step one, except that instead of having omega arm, I will have minus omega r. So the result, I can take the same result for the ring. Okay, uh, okay, yes, uh, I will reestablish it. Okay, it is here. So here, omega of the ring, in this case, what will be? It will be, okay, what? It will be minus N1 and 4 times omega sun. But omega of the sun, what will be? It is minus omega of the R. So I will have this, okay? Times omega of r so it will be minus n1 over n4 times minus omega of the r okay i can remove this one so if i will add them together i will have the final result where i have okay i will make it When the sun is fixed, that I need to add all together. So it is omega arm first plus arm fixed. So I will have uh, them together. Okay, here. And I have minus and minus. It will cancel. And even I can take the arm as as a factor so i will have first i will have one and plus this fraction time is omega of the r and this is actually what i will have here this is the second the result of the second step if the sun is fixed so this is what will be here in the second part and now i have the total combination i will have the effect of the sun and the effect of the arm itself one by one and omega output the total result will be the sum of the two together uh, let's go ahead with the epicyclic gear trains and uh, uh, okay so the the main idea is uh, to uh, to devise uh, or to split the procedure in uh, in two steps uh, because here we have two inputs uh, m mainly uh, or mostly the sun and uh, the arm and uh, we will work with the superposition principle and uh, we study the effects one by one so first we study the effect of uh, the sun so in that case uh, this is uh, was here so if i study the effect of the sun i will assume that uh, the arm is fixed then uh, i will uh, study the effect of uh, the sun uh, of the arm so the sun uh, should be fixed okay the sun should be fixed uh, 
And in this second step, I will make two sub steps. In the first case, okay, I would like at the end to have uh, a sun fix it. So what I will do in a first step is to get the sun, to get the sun uh, uh, go with the same speed as the arm. And in a second step, I will have the opposite. So at the end, uh, I will have uh, zero. If I will sum the two effects, I will have zero. For the arm, in the first sub step, uh, I will have the omega arm. So in this first sub step, the step two one, uh, I will have the sun and the arm uh, uh, rotating with the same speed. So everything in the system will rotate with the same speed. So, and uh, especially the ring will have also the same speed. In the second sub step, the step two two, I will fix the arm. So the arm is zero and the sun will move opposite to the arm. So I will take exactly the opposite of this one. So here I have negative, should be here uh, plus. And I will add the two sub steps here, two, one and two, two to get the step two. And it will work always uh, this uh, case. Now this is the basic or the, the, the most common or uh, the most popular uh, epicyclic gear train. There is multiple ones uh, here. Uh, this is the possible combination as, uh, as classified by, by Livier. So uh, here we will study only two cases and let's do and study uh, the first one, this one. Okay, so I will have, uh, this uh, epicyclic or planetary gear train and I would like to find omega 6 in terms of uh, omega 2 and omega 3. Okay, what I will have here is uh, I have the sun 2 connected to a planet 4 and planet 4 is also connected to a planet 5 and uh, the planet 5 will be connected to a gear 6. Now both 4 and 5 are supported by the same arm, arm 3 here. Now always in epicyclic gear trains we'll have always one arm and this arm will support the axis of all planets. So all planets will have the same, okay, the, their axis, not the same axis, but they have their axis supported by the R. Uh, so uh, here I will have to work in the first step, okay, to split and use superposition principle. So first step one, I will uh, calculate uh, the effect of the sun. So I will assume the arm is fixed. So here I just copy it, but I will uh, take uh, specifically here. So I will have here what will be uh, omega 6, okay, divided by omega of the sun. Sun here is 2. Now if omega 2, I will read everything here. I will. And the speed ratio here is omega 6. Now, in general, the arm is not fixed, but in this first step, I will assume that the arm is fixed. So I will calculate the angular velocity of the ring 6, okay, in terms of omega 2 or the ratio, assuming that the arm is fixed. The arm 3 will be fixed. Now, uh, as usual, if the arm is fixed, okay, all gears has fixed axis rotation, so I will use the 
fundamental speed ratios. Okay, so I will have to calculate omega six. Okay, and okay, assuming the arm is fixed, and divided by omega two divided by omega two. Okay, now in order to calculate six, I need to consider what is in in between because six is measured with five. So I will calculate only omega six over omega five. And uh, five is measured with four. So I can calculate omega five over omega four. And then four is measured with two, so I can calculate omega four over omega two. So I will add uh, something in between here. So uh, six is measured with five. So I can calculate omega six over omega five. But omega five, I if I divide by omega five, I need to multiply by omega five. And five is meshed with four. So I will divide by omega four. And if I will divide by omega four, I need to multiply by uh, omega four to keep the same ratio. Okay, now I can uh, go because here the ratios, all of them consider, uh, okay, measured gears, six and five, five and four, four and two. So I can uh, now go and consider the uh, speed ratios in terms of number of teeth. So here uh, I will have to consider, okay, one by one. Okay, I can forget about them. First, what is omega-6 over omega-5? Omega-6 over omega-5, I have a ring and a gear. So it is an internal contact. So here it will be plus N5 over plus uh, over N6. Why? Because it is internal contact. So if it is internal contact, both gears will move or rotate in the same uh, direction. Then, omega 5 over uh, omega 4. 5 and 4 are two spur gears. So they have external contact. So it will be negative. It will be negative uh, 4 divided by 5 and it should be negative because it is external contact and at last I will have omega 4 over omega 2 so it will be again it is external contact so it will be negative n2 negative n2 divided by n4 and, okay, I can simplify here. I can simplify, why? Because here I have N5 and N5 on the top, N4 and N4 on the top. So both will simplify, will cancel. And also I have two minuses here, so it will be plus. So at the end I will have I will have only N2 on the denominator and the only N6 in the denominator. So what I will have here, so if If the arm is fixed, you know, yeah, if, if the arm is fixed, so I'm considering only the effect of uh, the sun. So if the arm is fixed, it will be N2 over N6, 
n2 over n6 times omega 2 the angular velocity of the sun this is it this is the first step this is uh, okay one step this is the effect of the sun and to uh, consider the effect of the arm I need to go in step two okay step two and for step two I will use the tabular method So what I have, so the first sub-step to one, it will be always the same. I will assume that the sun is the same as the arm. The speed of the sun will be the same as the arm. Uh, and in that case, omega of the ring will be the same also as the arm. In step two, two, I will assume the arm is fixed, but the sun has negative omega of the arm so in this case so we are in exactly here in step one but with omega 2 equal minus omega r so i will have exactly this one n2 over n6 times minus omega r okay and later on i will need to add them together I need to add them together. So uh, if I will uh, add them together, I have here for the sun in the first step, sub step is omega arm, then negative omega arm. If I will add them, it is zero. For the arm in a first sub step, it is omega arm, then it is zero. At the end, I will have omega arm. And uh, here uh, it will be uh, okay. If I take omega arm as a factor, it will be here 1 minus, minus here, minus n2 over n6, minus. So it will be always the opposite of this one, minus n2 over n6 times omega r. And the result will be here, okay, I will have n2 over n6. Okay, this is what I have from the step one. Time is omega 2. And I will have this factor. Time is omega arm or omega 3. Okay, here I can use the numbers. So the sun is 2. So it will be here omega 2. Omega 2. It will be here omega 3, the one of the arm. So here it will be omega 3, 3. The ring is omega 6. It will be equal here to omega 3. This is what we have assumed. This is omega 3. This is omega 3. This is omega 6. And this is omega 6. Okay. And we are done with this example. So I will have another example, this one, and it will be the same procedure. Two steps. Step one, arm is fixed. Step two, sun is fixed. Or input is fixed, anyone. Because we can have the input as a ring also. It's not necessarily only a sun. So I will have uh, step one, I, we, I have said arm is fixed. Step two, uh, input is fixed input one of the input uh, other than the arm which will be fixed and to calculate that case I will again split it in two one the arm and the sun will move the same way and the second stem the arm is fixed and the sun has negative omega r okay so uh, I will have let's copy this one first 
So uh, I will not precise that it is omega r fixed. It's it's clear from the beginning. So I will have only omega six here, and so here again I will calculate omega six over omega two. It will be the same, but I prefer rewriting things. Okay. Okay, now here, I would like to calculate also uh, what will be here omega 6 in terms of omega 2, the one of the sun, and omega 3, the one of the arm. Here what we have, we have the sun, this is, it's a gear 2 here, which is measured with a gear uh, 4. 4 is on the same uh, axis and the same shaft as 5. And 5 is measured with a ring 6, except here the shaft of 4 and 5, the axis of rotation uh, of 4 and 5 is supported by the arm 3, the same one. Okay, uh, we will have to follow the same procedure. Uh, okay, we know it is, it's step 1, it is the arm is fixed, I don't need to mention it. So, I will calculate the speed ratio in case of the arm is fixed, so I can use the usual speed ratios. Uh, and again, I need to make 6 is in contact with 5. Uh, so, I will divide by 5 and multiply by 5. Uh, okay. Then, uh, 5 is on the same shaft as 4. So, I will have here. Uh, 4, so if I will divide by 4, I need to multiply by 4. Now, uh, here I will have okay, omega 6 over omega 5, 6 and 5, a ring and a gear, so it will be internal contact, it will be positive, and I will have n5 over n six. Now five and four, they are on the same shaft, so and they have uh, the same speed, so their ratio is one. And at last here, I will have omega four over omega uh, two. Omega four over omega two. They are two spur uh, gears. They have external contact, so it is negative n2 over n4. Okay, now here I don't have uh, much simplification, so it will be minus uh, n2 n5. It will be minus n2 n5 in the numerator, and I will have n4 n6 in the denominator. Okay, in the denominator. Okay, and this is it. I am done with the first step. So it will be uh, this one. Omega 6 will be minus N2, N5 over N4, N6 times Omega 2. Okay. Then uh, I need to go to the second step. Okay, to the second step here. And again, I will follow the same procedure. So the first step, I have the gear block it. I will have all, uh, will move with the same velocity as the arm. So the velocity of the arm is omega three. Uh, the sun will move with the same velocity. So omega two will be equal to omega three. And the ring will move also with the same velocity, so I will have omega 6 will move uh, with the same uh, velocity. Then in a second step, I will assume that the arm is fixed, and uh, here the arm 0, I will choose. And now, uh, let me insist, I didn't uh, point at this before, Okay, I can choose two, because why? Because I have mobility here equal to. So I can uh, 
play with the two inputs the way I want. So I can fix independently. This is what means mobility equal to. I can fix independently the kinematics of the two inputs. Any one. I can choose here any two uh, links, any two gears or uh, the arm in this uh, gear train. Uh, I can choose two and six as inputs, for example, and fix everything for, for them. I can choose uh, any any gear and the arm, uh, uh, but it's mostly what we have as inputs are either, okay, always the arm and with either uh, the sun or, or the ring. So here I can choose the way I want the inputs so I will choose for the sun that it will go in the opposite direction as as in the first step, which is minus omega 3, and I will fix the arm. So in this case, I am exactly here. The arm is fixed, so I will just substitute to omega 2 minus omega 3. Why? Because omega 2 is equal to minus omega 3. So in this case, I can use omega 6 will be exactly this case. It is minus n2 and 5 over and 4 and 6 this minus omega 3 okay now the last step or the the result of step 2 when the sun is fixed the sun is fixed why because i went with omega 3 then i went with minus omega 3 as a result i will have zero now uh for the arm, I went first with omega-3, then I, I blocked it, so uh, as total, I will have omega-3. And I will uh, sum the effect of both here. So if I will sum the effect of both here, I will have here plus omega-3, and here it will be plus n2, n5, n4, and 6 times omega-3. So I can consider omega-3 uh, as a factor. It will be 1 plus... Uh, N2, N5, it will be here, N2, N5, uh, and down it will be uh, N4, N6, and it will be plus, okay? It will be plus, okay? And this is it. This is it. Uh, the effect if the arm, is, uh, so if the arm is fixed, I have the effect of the sun. So here it will be time is omega 2 and here the sun is fixed omega 2 is 0 so I will have only the effect of the arm and the effect of the arm is this one and I have now the result and I am done also with this example now imagine imagine uh, the inputs here uh, are 2 and 6 and uh, uh, and you would like to have uh, omega-3. Now, here, uh, okay, when we establish this one, I can establish it, consider any, any uh, two inputs. But this result, this relation between omega-6, omega-2, and omega-3 is true for any, uh, for any inputs. So, if my question was, what will be, uh, what will be uh, the omega-3 in terms of omega-2 and omega-6, I can work exactly the way, assuming 2 and 3 inputs, and later on, what I will do is just, I will invert this equation. So, just here, I will use this equation, I can use this equation, okay, and just solve it for omega-3. So if I want to solve this one for omega-3, uh, and uh, for example, first I can uh, move this one to the left, for example, and the minus will be plus. This is first case. Then... Uh, what I can do also is to multiply by uh, n2, n4, uh, by n4, n6, all, 
can multiply all. So if I will multiply this by n4 and 6, uh, it will cancel and I will have here n4 and 6 omega 6. Uh, also here I will have n2, uh, okay, I know it multiply. So I will have this case, okay, and uh, I will have this case, okay, and then later I can divide by this sum. So if I will divide by n4 and 6 plus n5, so here, So I can divide by all this sum here, okay, and I will have, okay, n4 and 6 here, and here I will have n2 and 5, and this is Omega 3, okay, I can flip to, I can bring Omega 3 to the left and uh, bring all of this to the right. So, if the question is about the arm, you can work as previously. You assume the arm and anyone, for example, the sun is the input. You can always work with the arm and the sun as the input as here. You work till the end and then you solve your equation that you have obtained uh, using this one. Okay, for example, also, if the input is 6 and 3, if the input is 6 and 3, you can, uh, okay, work as usual here, assuming uh, sun is the input, omega 3 is uh, also the second input and solve, for, okay, find the equation of omega 6, and then you solve this equation to find what is omega 2. Because this equation is so general. It does not depend on which one is the input, okay? Even to establish it, we have assumed it is the input omega 2 and omega 3. It is more general than that, okay? Uh, we can even uh, solve it if you want. I can keep this one here, uh, so, okay, this is example two. Yeah, I, I will clean it a little bit maybe. So here, okay, I don't need this one. This is the second one. So originally, this is what we have established. This is what we have established together, assuming that two and three are the input. Now I have solved it for omega three, but also I can solve it for omega two if I want. If I want that six and three will be the input, I can solve this one for omega six, for omega two. And in this case, I will first multiply by n four and six. Okay, here, so I will multiply here by n4 and 6, and here it will simplify. And then I will uh, divide by n2 and 5. So if I will divide by uh, n2 and 5, so I will divide by n2 and 5 here. And here, and this is, it will cancel because I will have here one. I will have one. And uh, I will have, okay, n4 and 6 in the numerator. I will have it here in the numerator. And uh, I will have here minus omega 2. So I can move a minus omega 2 to the left, it will be plus. And I can move uh, the part with omega 6 to the right and it will be minus. 
okay? And I will have this equation. I will have this equation. So all these three equations are equivalent. They're exactly the same equation. So you can establish any one, and once you have any one, you can find the two others. 